Norman Thomas said, the American people will never knowingly adopt socialism, but under the name of liberalism, they will adopt every fragment of the socialist program until one day America will be a socialist nation without knowing how it happened. And Norman Thomas said that the American people basically would not, they will become socialist, but they wouldn't realize that they were becoming socialist until it had already happened. So big thanks to the Daily Caller. Um, watch the video clip of theirs. And it put everything that Mr. Thomas said into perspective. Hi, this is Matt Miller from the Daily Caller News Foundation. Today I'm out here in front of the White House freezing because I don't have access to a jacket. We're asking pro-Bernie socialists if they'll give me their jacket. Let's go see what they have to say. So you got an interviewer going around asking people who uh, identify as socialists or think socialism is fine. Ask them some very basic questions, but you can kind of get an idea of their thought process. And then it's revealed that it's more of a, you know, not for me, uh, but just for the type of mentality. Listen to some of the answers to some of these questions in this video. What would you think about having a socialist president? Well, don't we all benefit from Social Security and Medicare? Do you think like some socialism might be a good thing? We are. Demo we are. We live in a socialist society. It's a democratic socialism here. Okay, so she, she said we're in a socialist society. So she thinks that, that socialism and democratic socialism are the same thing. Um, kind of. But in my mind, you know, democratic socialism just means socialism uh, declared by the majority. You see, because the way they think of uh, democracy is they think of majority rule. They don't think in terms of a republic. Notice she didn't say that we live in a republic. She said we live under democratic socialism. So that lets you know right there already that in her mind, uh, the rule of law, uh, the United States as a republic, doesn't even exist. I mean, think about that. It, it's, it's not, the, the needle doesn't have to move very far. Because in her mind, the, the word republic and the concept never entered never entered so she thinks of democracy as most of them do dem dem democracy democratic it's majority rule and a lot of people shoot a lot of things at me on social media uh, about the majority and the minority and and kind of you know don't feel bad because you're now in the minority i'm thinking to myself that's really what these people believe it's all about majority rule so in their minds democratic socialism that is socialism by decree of the majority so that makes it okay let's continue how would you feel about having somebody that calls themselves a, a democratic socialist i would be okay with it i i would be fine with it as well do you, you favor socialism uh, there's a big, uh, there's a big um, area for socialism to to work within the um, current political um, framework that we have established in the United States. I kind of like what Bernie has to say, honestly. Do you think that like some of his socialist policies would be a good thing if they were implemented? Uh, I don't think they'd necessarily be a bad thing. Do you think like taxpayers paying for health care for everybody is a good idea? I don't think it's the worst idea. You know, I'm freezing out here. I don't have a jacket. Do you mind if I borrow your jacket? I am not going to let you have my jacket my mom bought me. She would not be happy with me. Okay. Isn't that kind of what socialism is? Uh, the idea of socialism would be that everyone pays their fair share so that everyone can... What is fair share? Somebody, somebody clarify this for me. What is everybody paying their fair share? I keep hearing this over and over again. Everybody pay their fair share. What is the fair share and who gets to determine what the fair share is? turn make sure they're healthy you being cold is different than you having access to health care okay but i don't have access to a jacket uh you can go inside where it's warm you can also go to charitable organizations that can give you a jacket that's see i think this that's huge right there what he just said he said you could go to charitable organizations that could give you a jacket now i'm a huge fan of charity as a matter of fact i think that we could probably get 
more done as far as providing to those who are in need through charity. You see, I think that uh, people are apt to do more and give more when they feel like it's of their own free will rather than it being forced from the government. I'll give you an example. Think about um, a, a marriage being dissolved. Um, and then you have a, a father who has children by the woman they're getting divorced. He has children and he needs to take care of his children. And this is the type of person who has no problem taking care of his children. He has no problem taking care of his responsibilities. And for the most part, he and the mother got along. They just grew apart. Let's say they grew apart, right? But now just imagine the difference in attitude if he was able to take care of his children because he knew that it was the right thing to do uh, of his own free will of his own sense of duty but before given an opportunity he just gets slaughtered in court i mean beat 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 to death they, they treat him like a criminal like he's the worst thing on the planet now, I've never been divorced, but I can say that um, if that was if that situation was created for me, and of course, there's a narrative that goes along with it, I would say that I'm going to give you exactly what the judge tells me to give you. Since you want the judge to be the one who makes that decision, I'm going to do exactly what the judge says, and you need to hope that it's enough. Because I won't put one extra dollar in your hand. Anything else that my children need, I'm going to take care of that myself. You see the difference in the attitude? When, when you could have, if you had cooperation and if you allow people to, to do what they feel is right of their own free will, you'll get more from them. Unless, of course, you believe that human beings just inherently won't do the right thing or won't try to help each other, won't try to work together. You have to force the issue. All I'm saying is that when you force the issue, you tend to get less. He 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 likes what Bernie said. Uh, the concept of democratic socialism appeals to him. But then he turns right around and says, you know, that that's not his responsibility. A charitable organization could do that. So which one is it? Do you believe in charity or do you believe in uh, decree by the government? I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. Let's continue. Okay, but you won't give me a jacket. I will not give you a jacket now. I'm freezing out here. Do you mind if I uh, have your jacket? I don't have a jacket. I don't have access to a jacket. Uh, it's really unfortunate, but there's um, there's a couple stores nearby where you could purchase one. Okay. Do you think? Well, I don't have the money to purchase one either. I don't have access to one. Oh, uh, well, that's really unfortunate. But uh, there's several opportunities in America um, to provide yourself an income, and uh, therefore um, having one will give you access to a jacket. That sounds like capitalism, though. Uh, so you, some people could argue, yes, it does sound like capitalism. Would you tell people that can't afford to go to college or have health care that maybe they can just go and work and um, earn enough money to purchase health care or purchase a college uh, education? I feel like there's going to be opportunities for people that aren't necessarily in the pipeline for traditional uh, income opportunities to have an opportunity where um, they'll be able to earn a living and be able to support themselves in a way where um, they'll be able to finally reach that opportunity. Okay, just like I can maybe reach the opportunity to buy a jacket. Absolutely. So actually, I'm, I'm freezing my butt off out here. Is it, you know, if I have your jacket, can I borrow your jacket? <laughs> I don't think it would fit you. Otherwise, I'd be happy to share. Bernie Sanders is doing. That's important right there. It, that that sounds like. Um, something completely disconnected. But think about what you just said. I don't think it would fit you. What does that imply? What does that reveal? That everything's not a one size fits all. But if we were to, to move into a socialist society, isn't that what we'd get? One size fits all? It's no longer you know what size you prefer what size suits you as an individual the best? No, everybody is the same. Am I right? Am I wrong? Am I on the right track or am I lost here? Now, let's continue.
doing so well. How would you feel about having a socialist president if he did uh, win? Well, he's not technically a socialist. He's a democratic socialist. There's a difference. Okay. And, and uh, I think he's got some great policy ideas. So um, I wouldn't have a problem with him being president at all. Do you think socialism, like, could, like, some more socialism or his policies, his socialist policies would be a good thing if they were implemented? Absolutely. I mean, I think we can learn a lot from our European counterparts in terms of the socialized, uh, you know, programs that they have in their countries. So, yeah. Absolutely. So, actually, I'm, I'm freezing out here. Before we go on, um, I hear that example a lot about European countries and the system that they have. Uh, what have you, what have you heard about these European countries and the systems that they have? Where, what have you heard about where the money comes from? Um, where the money historically has come from? What type of, of uh, uh, bank account they had before they introduced a more socialistic type of society? Um, what have you heard about the, the medical care and things like that. Has it been all good things or have you ever heard about having to wait in lines and, and stuff like that? I'll throw in my my take on that. I just feel like um, as soon as that happens, as soon as the government is completely in charge of uh, health care, you'll have situations where it'll be kind of like Cuomo. If, if you if you Remember the interview with Andrew Cuomo, he was talking about, well, most of the people that are dying are old people that are dying anyway, right? People die. People are dying right now. That's what he said in that video. Um, but it just kind of makes me think that the government might decide that it's their duty to do some type of triage. I mean, if the system's being overloaded, maybe we should set some type of criteria about who receives care so we can make sure that the most viable and productive uh, citizens and the ones with the most potential, like the kids and stuff like that, that they're taken care of. Maybe when somebody gets a certain age, they just shouldn't receive medical care anymore. Um, things like that. You know, if the government's deciding that, they got to decide what happens with the money. They're in complete control of that. Is that something that you want? Let's continue. I don't have a jacket. Do you mind if I borrow yours? Yes. You do mind? I do mind. Because I'm cold. I would be cold then, so I don't know why you'd want to borrow my jacket. Okay, but isn't socialism about, you know, sharing and and people in need, like, giving giving what you have so that they can have it instead? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I want to continue this uh, interview anymore. Thank you very much for your time. No problem. Well, do you think that some of his socialist policies would be good if implemented? Would they be a positive, uh, a positive change? Yes, I do. What policies? What policies? I wonder what policies policies she's thinking of right now. Single payer health care would be a great thing for this country to have. It works in literally every other industrialized nation. Single payer health care. Okay. Now we hear it again. This is a major talking point. Major talking point. Let me know in the comment section what you think about single payer health care and if that's going to uh, save our society. What, what kind of effect do you think that's going to have? Um, considerably less expensive uh, post-secondary education would be a great place to start. So I'm freezing out here. I, I don't have a jacket. Do you mind if I borrow your jacket? About to make a point, but sure, I would let you borrow my jacket. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Because <laughs> it's like socialism. No, it's not. Oh, it's not? Nope. It's like I don't I don't have access to a jacket like some folks might not have access to um, health care education right. and the taxpayer like the you know people, citizens are going to have to pay and uh, to allow them to have access right like pay higher taxes well that's true but when you stop and think about what you're getting in return so for example uh, between what I paid personally and what my employer paid for uh, for health care coverage, that is insurance and what I paid out of pocket last year, uh, came close to $20,000. Yeah. 
So if I did not have to pay that twenty thousand dollars to uh, the insurance companies, to my healthcare providers, but instead had to pay that twenty thousand dollars to the federal government to provide health care for everybody, person in this country, I would be totally okay with that. In fact, I would one hundred percent be be supportive of that. Now, if it was a situation where there was not um, a bigger differential between the cost and the benefit, then sure, I would have to think about it. Okay, so, so so let's 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 talk about that just for a second. I think what a lot of people don't realize is, when it, in terms of insurance, insurance is a business. I'm licensed in insurance. I, I've, I've done many, many, um, many, many policies. Um, and one of the things that I think a lot of people don't get is that the insurance company, in itself, in and of itself, is a business. Insurance has never been about nonprofit. That's just that's why so many questions are asked when you're when you're when we're building a policy, we're going through some things as far as your health, uh, your history, your family history. It's all about determining risk, right? Insurance is about spreading the risk out among many, 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 many people. What he just described was about instead of paying the insurance company, paying the government. Essentially, what that's doing is making the government the insurance company. So now you've taken something that has always been a private enterprise because insurance companies are private. You know, this is uh, civilian sector corporations and turning it into a government entity. There's already a, a, a ton of government regulations when it comes to insurance. I think it's probably one of the he most heavily regulated industries in the country. Ton of regulations, right? And then when you start getting to financial products outside of insurance, now you got the SEC. I mean, it's it's huge. But what he's saying is, let's take all of this and make it the responsibility of the government. First of all, do you think the government can do as good of a job as a for-profit company whose uh, profitability depends on it? If you don't if you don't weigh the risk factors properly, an insurance company, I mean, they they, they would never be able to cover. Um, all the payoffs that they would have to make. But at the same time, you've got the government preventing them from making too much of a profit or raising prices too fast. So I find that interesting. I don't think a lot of people understand, you know, how that works. And, and on the flip side, I think um, nobody ever thinks about the price in, in the first place. Notice they, they, they always talk about who's paying for something, but they never really talk about how much it costs. What can be done to drive down the cost of medical care? What can be done to drive down the cost of insurance? The free market plays a huge part in, in affecting these prices if you allow it to function. If you don't regulate things to the point where the barriers to entry are so high, and the cost of, of, of basic things like record keeping is so large that a lot of people can't participate in that industry. Thus, the prices start to go up. That's just the way things work. But maybe rather than increase government regulation, we could kind of open things up to the free market a little bit. Maybe that'll start driving the cost down. Maybe we should think about how we can uh, reduce the cost. I mean, how much sense does it make to to say, okay, these are my bills every month. My bills are X amount of dollars every month. So now I need to get another job. Um, and now I need to put my kids to work. They're not even old enough to work legally, but they can cut grass. They can do something. Um, and start thinking of all these ways that you can increase your income. Like increasing income is a good thing. But maybe the first step we should take is to reduce our expenses. You see in financial planning, things like that, that's the first step is always figure out where your money's going. First and foremost, and then figure out what you can decrease, cut, eliminate. Then you have a clear picture of where you're already at. So you might be making enough money. You just don't know where your money's going right um and you're paying for things that you don't need to pay for like um i don't know maybe the 100 channels on tv that you never watch or a bunch of 
monthly subscriptions that you never use, things like that. So maybe we should figure out where the money's going first, figure out how to reduce those costs before we start pumping more money into it in the form of tax dollars and relinquishing control into the hands of the government. Just my thoughts. But I think Mr. Norman Thomas um, got it right. I think he got it right. Uh, I, I doubt very seriously that I'd be a fan of his, considering you know he's a socialist, he's a, he's a pacifist, um, and I, I think a lot of people weren't weren't fans either. Uh, considering he ran six times for president, um, never quite made it, so it probably wasn't the most popular idea. It's becoming more popular. Uh, but what he said, that quote, I think is huge, very powerful. And I think it's true, sad, uh, but it's true.